this event it was it was good there were a couple of things that they could have improved on but like the amount of resources and mana like all of the mechanics i think it's definitely praiseworthy especially this guy over here let's see how much we get today we are getting 16.4 mil mana and so that drives my total up to 103 mil but i did spend like another 60 mil on another few characters however unfortunately today we will not be spending too much time in the game because we will be talking about the upcoming update and so that being said hi Welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming guild update. The update, it's not only going to include like guild stuff, there are a few other things, but like predominantly the biggest feature is the guilds. I'll also be running through the mechanics just to show you guys like a little bit of a sneak peek as to what to expect. And so with that being said, let's just jump right into it. And so as you can see, we have a new feature in the guild. And so what this means is that you really do need to prepare for this because some of the guild stuff is pretty freaking cracked you know and so at this point in the game the most important thing for the guild update is being able to play with active players there's not going to be like any guild wars or anything as you can see there's going to be donations and aside from that maybe like a friend stuff but again what you really need is like 30 or 50 or 80 i can't remember i think it was 80 max you just need to make sure that your guild is filled with active people. All right, and so let's have a look at exactly why. So donation available to players who have unlocked the guild feature by that. Enter guild from main screen. Donations can be found in the event tab. All right, so select items to donate and after donation, blah, 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 blah. Rewards include donation progress and all this stuff. I will show you guys this very, very soon. And so the most important part is that guild progress will reset to zero every Monday at 4 a.m. UTC minus seven. All right, I think that's enough reading for that one. So let me head over to the spreadsheet. Big shout out to Alier. 7995 on discord thank you for this compilation and as always all resources will be down in the description below and so i'm not going to stray anywhere i'm just going to go over to the guild update and so voila this is what you can expect please do remember that what you see here is not necessarily representative of 100 percent what we'll get for global especially because i do know that yostar and pixel neko they are trying to you know they're trying to improve the game a lot for the better and so with that caveat in mind have a look at all this so as you can see we can actually increase guild levels and then so yeah i was right it was max members of 80. after that as you can see vice leaders elites is kind of whatever but the most important thing is this guy over here so level seven for the guild shop level three so as you can see guild maintenance exp it comes through weekly so that is probably the best break point but like i would say the top priority is to like go rush for seven but not only that like before i talked about all this i emphasized how important it was to have active players and so here we are going to see the first impact of that so as you can see guild level increased by all members contribution points and then that one's okay but like the last one here is more important each member who clears all daily activity rewards gains 30 points of contribution a day so it's this contribution that you get from the daily activity rewards so it's literally just doing your dailies and getting that stamina pot which you should be doing anyway getting literally everyone to do that and then getting those contribution points in which you can push your guild level and then it's going to open up the guild shop in which you can buy a lot of really nice stuff all right so that's the guild system in a nutshell let me have a look at if they do talk about it a little bit more so yeah i think i missed the last sentence of that donation progress is shared among the entire guild so it's this guy right here as you can see it's going Going from zero all the way to 4.8k and you got milestones and you get stuff everybody gets stuff at each milestone and then coming back over here uh donation progress reaches certain thresholds which is what i literally just said we're gonna get extra guild quartzes blah 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 you can receive up to 200 guild quartzes as donation rewards each week after that you cannot donate this week which is fair enough anyway guild shop i'll show you guys the guild shop very very soon and then guild level i'm pretty sure i just explained that all right so this paragraph down here summarizes the guild levels that i literally Really just talked about so let's start talking about the rewards themselves okay so again this is the donation screen let me just zoom in a little bit more and as you can see these are all of the different materials that are accepted as part of the donations and so look at that that's essentially a whole bunch of your equipment level up materials as well as your ascension materials at this point in the game we are still going to be struggling a little bit for the ascension materials so i probably would recommend using these equipment ones especially because like well i don't know about you guys but i have been farming the equipment stage like furiously and so i have stockpiled a massive amount of these so that's probably my recommendation on like what you should be donating and of course if you guys are whaling then like you guys can donate whatever but like you will be capped okay and so if i scroll 
scroll a little bit over here, uh, I want to show you guys this. Oh my God, it's flickering everywhere. All right, so I wanted to talk about this one over here, the pink text. Guild Quartz's total weekly gain 600, and then you got your contribution points 424. And on top of that, your maximum contribution is 30 by 7 plus 199 plus 15, which equals to 424. So what the math is saying is that you need 24 fully donated members each week to get the full 400 Guild Quartz's. And again, this brings me back to saying like, oh man, you need to have as many actives in your guild as possible. And then suddenly I show you guys this math. Well, like then why? Why should you listen to me? Because people are going to forget, okay? That's the that's the reality of it. Safety net it as hard as you can because you do want the maximum contribution to go as fast as you can to get up these guild levels and so you can access that shop. And so let's start talking about the shop over here. Voila. All right, and so, mm. I love to see it. Guild Quartz Shop Level 3, there are already a lot of familiar faces. And so to start things off, bam, we've got 5 pulls for 500 of the Quartzes. And then on top of that, we've got the reroll rocks in which you can get that third line at a 15% chance, something like that. And so just by looking at the costs, you realize that it is going to take like quite a fair bit to clear it out. Five by 500 is 2.5K and then you got another 2K for the reroll rock. But the good thing about this is that you can see the different timers, right? It says two days here and then 23, so, uh, how do I say, a uh, week, no. Uh, minutes. No, it's hours. No. Okay, guys, I swear I can read some Chinese. Holy moly. So again, two different timers, two days, 23 hours. These two are on a monthly rotation, whereas the rest of the shop is on a weekly rotation. Except for this guy. This bad boy on the smiley face, I'm pretty sure it's a one-off purchase. But otherwise, as you can already see, it's pretty clear that this is going to be a great shop. Because not only will we be able to get 5 pulls and 2 of these reroll rocks per month, we're also going to skip right past these two guys and look at these skill materials. And if you guys have been playing for a while, like ever since week 1 or day 1, you're going to quickly realize how much of these skill materials we actually need. And so for you guys who unfortunately have not made it that far, let me just like show you guys really Real quick so that one i'm pretty sure costs like 30 of the purple mats and then from here let's go one up this is going to cost 30 i'm pretty sure this one costs 60 of these purple mats and then on top of that this one skill over here costs 30 of the gold mats and then this one costs 60 of it and then you gotta freaking do that twice as you can see look at that 30 of the gold mats and then that's gonna go 60 oh my god so yeah at the start of the video i was flexing my 100 mil mana it evaporates my guys i am telling you it evaporates in a second. And so hopefully with that, you'll understand why I am so ecstatic for these guys to be here. 30, 40, and 40. The blue ones in particular, they feel so freaking bad to farm. But yeah, in terms of progression, it's a great shop. As for these other ones down here, um, how do I say it? It's hard to recommend them because there are actually a lot of other sources to get these. Like if you have a look at some of the existing shops that we already have, you can definitely buy these with a lot of your materials. And so with that being said, let me hop back over here and let's see if there was anything that we didn't cover. Uh, no, we covered essentially everything, but just have a read through the rules. Maybe I didn't cover everything. But with that being said, it's time to get a move on. So let's go. List of new contents. We've got the feature in Friends. This is, oh my God, this is so blessed. Because I don't know about you guys, but I have been autoing for a very, very long time now. It's been probably about like two or three weeks since I've just like straight ordered. And so I think what a lot of you are going to realize is that autoing does not get you friendship points. However, with this bad boy over here, you can send live and collect friendship points in the friends tab. It's so good because like, <laughs> Uh, I feel a little bit dumb, but I was actually manually stages for the friendship points. But yeah, now you don't have to be dumb like me and just click like. Moving on, we've got Tornell as well as the Muneer rate up. So, okay, okay. So if you guys think back to the uh, the shop, what is it called? This shop over here. So as you can see, I bought out the Caledonia. It's pretty easy to theorize what is going to come out in this shop. We may follow a CN schedule, but we may not. But what is certain is that all of the perma characters, including the tunnel as well as the Muneer, they are probably going to end up here at some point. There are some rumors as to like who is going to be coming next and all of that. We got the Caledonia this time, but with this system in place, like that kind of really changes my recommendation. So coming back over here, Tornell and Muneer. Muneer is a really, really strong, I'm pretty sure the strongest single target magic DPS right now. However, unless you're going for like the really high charts, the really high rankings and stuff, I would probably recommend against actually rolling on her banner here. However, as for Tornell, 
Tornell, I know she's a healer and it's kind of weird that I would recommend going for the healer, but Tornell has a really, really busted skill that actually she's not really just healing anymore. All right, my guys, we are on Clone Lancefield's website. So Tornell, her skill too, Forbidden Dark Moon, she doesn't actually have a chaos skill. What she has is probably one of like the most cracked healer skills in the game. So it's on a charge system. And so what this means is that when you use four skills successfully, you are able to trigger this one for free. So what you get is a heal over time, heals all allies for 30% of her attack for 10 seconds. And then you also get Night Wish for 10 seconds in which your dolls are gonna get a 24% increase in Tornell's attack. And then their damage is also gonna increase by 15%, but that's only at level one. Let me show you guys level five. At level five, the dolls attacks are gonna be increased by 40% of Tornell's attack. And so it is important to actually juice up Tornell's attack. But that is not really like why she is so incredibly cracked. It's uh, it's actually this one over here. Child of Tabu, level one generates one chaos energy every four seconds. Like she literally does it all. But if I then pop this guy to level two, it generates one chaos energy every two seconds, which, which is actually just at nuts. It's so nuts. And so as you can see, she is very much an offensive support as well as defensive. But yeah, her kit, it's just like so freaking stacked. And so between uh, Tornell and Muneer, Unfortunately, Muneer, as much as I like her, I'm just gonna wait for her to shop in the shop. But for Tornell, I would say she is a very, very high priority. All right, and so moving on, we've got Soul Update. So we just got the Nana and the Metamorphosis coming into the Soul Summon permanently. And then after that, we have the Chrono Space Breach Season 3. We've got a Claim All button on the reward page. I don't think the reward page actually resets. I'm not sure if there's actually a system change here. I think it's literally just changing the two JPEGs from the Anemone and the, the Alchemist lady and so this time we're going to be getting the priestess flare as well as the frog guy okay aside from that other updates ui optimization and fixes so a couple of interesting things here miku's normal attack did not deal the bonus damage this one here fixed the issue that yui's second skill dance of legendary beast cannot apply the buff to her first skill demon's bane spear so for you people who are not really familiar with yui yui is essentially the oh she well first of all she's the character that you can buy from the chrono space Breach shop, the PvP shop. Oh my god, forgive me for that. Anyway, so she is essentially a uh, an Ella, but for single target DPS. So Yui has like the whole transform thing going on, but unfortunately, like her skills just weren't actually working together. And so I do know that a lot of people do use the Yui to go chase those time rankings and Hopefully this will be able to help you do that because like, well, it's a bug, right? Anyway, aside from that, I think that's actually it. We got some compensation in 200 souls and a stamina flask. And so that is a pretty neat update. We got the guild update. We've got uh, the friendship point update. We do have the Tornell and Muneer rate ups on the awakening summons. So if you guys did do the awakening summons and had pity, that is going to carry over. But yeah, that's kind of it. So our event is wrapping up. We're going to get some of this. And I think after these awakening summons finish, who knows? Maybe there'll be another event. And so my dudes, now it's time for you guys to let me know. How hard did you guys freaking go on the event? How much mana did you guys end up with? But on top of that, let me know how you guys are feeling about this. Are you hyped that we're finally going to be able to do something with the guild? Or are you going to be like, I don't care. I want Muneer. I'm going to roll for Muneer. Or maybe you are just going to be hyped because you can finally be on the Frogs team. Then again, maybe you're not hyped about anything. And well, whatever it is going to be, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a comment down below because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much but otherwise if you did like this video please consider a like on it and if you like me more than that then please consider a subscribe but otherwise as the secret message in these patch notes said and i assure you guys it is in here somewhere but it said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye